Hello, and thanks for joining me for a quick chat on Born on a Tuesday by L. Nathan John. This is the most recent book that I finished. Um, following this chat, I will also touch uh, briefly on what I'm currently reading, as well as chat a bit about my next read. But yeah, Born on a Tuesday by an L. Nathan John. Um, L. Nathan John is a Nigerian writer, um, and this book was published originally in Nigeria, from what I can tell, and then published um, in the U.S. in 2016, at least this edition that I read, um, and I'm not sure where else it's been published. But um, yeah, um, you know, I, I wanted to read this because last year I had read a book by, um, a book called The Book of Phoenix, which is a science fiction work um, that uh, was written by a, an American who has, uh, you know, she has ties to Nigeria. I think her parents are from Nigeria. And then earlier this year, I read um, another work by her set in that same world called Who Fears Death. And I really liked that aspect of storytelling. But, you know, last year, um, after reading um, The Book of Phoenix by Nnedi Okorafor, uh, is the author, um, you know, I, I thought, well, I'd really like to read more, um, more works set in Africa or by African authors, not necessarily science fiction, but maybe something literary. And I heard about this work, I think, through Neil Griffith's channel. I'm not exactly sure that's where it came from, but I think I heard about it somewhere on BookTube and um, jotted it down as a potential read. Then when I was curating my list for, uh, my must-read list for 2017, I thought, yeah, this one's a good fit, you know, for my reading diversity, um, since it's a, a Muslim culture and it's an African-Nigerian writer. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's why I came to read it and um you know, wow, I really enjoyed it. The story is basically a buildings Roman. It's basically a coming coming of age tale of of this young boy Dantala. We follow him from being a boy. I don't know exactly how old he is because he doesn't exactly know. Um from his boyhood really though up until uh right at the beginning of his what I would call his adulthood. Um, his boyhood starts, you know, we, we, we start, we meet him and he's a young boy. He's running with this gang of other young boys that, that sort of are homeless boys that live under this tree. He has been sent away to a different city by his father to a school at a mosque um, that is has sort of treated him with a certain level of indifference. And even though he's very bright and can learn very quickly and learns Arabic, um, and learns to read and write in, in Arabic as well as um, his language Hausa. Um, he, um, you know, he he eventually leaves that that school and joins this group of boys. Like I said, they sort of um, they're not really terribly bad boys. They, you know, they look for ways to earn money, and one of the ways they earn money is um, they do tasks for what's called the small party, a political party that's running in opposition to the main party. And, um, you know, ultimately they do get paid to do some vandalism and things like that. Some of, at one particular instance, this goes out of control and uh, something very tragic ends up happening. He ends up having to flee that town, and then he goes to a neighboring city where he um, meets um, a, ultimately, eventually meets a sheikh at a mosque there who sort of takes him in as a student because he's very bright. Like I mentioned, um, he eventually learns English, becomes the sheikh's assistant, um, and um, gets involved with the mosque there. Well, there is a lot of political and religious turmoil going on in his region of Nigeria, and the mosque gets sort of swept up in that as well as the sheikh with whom he is involved. Um, his brothers join a rival uh, a sect, a Shiite sect, um, and apparently he is not Shiite. Um, so his family sort of split apart by that. Um, and he um, ultimately, the mosque, like I said, is caught up in some political uh, issues as well as uh, a rival religious um, uh force and um, there is eventually some violence and there's a government crackdown and that is when um, our uh, Dantala eventually becomes an adult sort of in tragic and brutal circumstances. So I don't want to give a lot of way else away about the story because to me the story was very engrossing and engaging. Um, I really read this fairly quickly because it was uh, after, um, you know, he, after about a, maybe a fourth or less into the book, 
it really became uh, I really became engaged in the story, and so I read it very quickly. It's kind of a page turner, um, so, but I don't want to give away the plot to anyone that um, and, you know. I don't want to diminish the experience that anyone uh, might have who might be interested in reading the book, so I won't give much else away about the actual storyline. But you know, going into the book, reading the book, you know, I I learned right away, I realized right away that this boy had quite a different experience than me growing up. And, um, you know, I wanted to really read this book, not so much as how we were different, but how we were the same or how we were similar and what sort of forces of life or aspects of life or living um, do we share in common, even though we didn't share um, a, a culture, um, a socioeconomic level, a religion even. Um, so we didn't really share that. But, you know, I was really curious to read this in light of, you know, what did we share? And I kind of came away with it with, with a few things. Like when he's a child or a boy, uh, really what he's looking for is um, he's really looking for kindness. You know, he's looking for people to be, someone to be nice to him, uh, someone to take care of him and look out after him. Because I think that's what, you know, most children um, look for ultimately, and you know that's that's um, not to say he wasn't a loved um, a loved uh, child uh, because he is close, very close with his mother. Although he's not in that town where she is, um, but he does love his his family. Um, but um, you know, whenever he finds himself due to circumstances, he finds himself in this other town with these uh, street boys, I think that, to me, that's what, in my interpretation, that's what he was sort of looking for out of that, out of that group. And then, you know, when he was a young man, you know, he leaves there, um, he's looking for, um, with, when he moves to the other, other town and meets the sheikh and gets involved with the mosque school there, uh, you know, I think as a young man, he's looking for a mentor, you know, he's looking for someone who'll show him, you know, how to grow up and um, what to, you know, how to, how to grow up and be a, be a man, and that's what he's looking for. Um, and you know, so that's that's what he sort of finds in this in this mo in this shake uh, at the mosque. So um, you know, that's really identifiable too as a young person. I think we all look for that. Um, you know, as we're trying to find our way into adulthood, we look for those people who can you know show us the way. And you know, sometimes that works out well for us, and sometimes it doesn't. And in um, Dantala's world, you know, some of those uh, people turned out to be uh, good and some not as good. Uh, but, you know, um, that's sort of how we what we all experience, you know, as young adults as well. And so um, and, and likewise, we see, you know, glimpse in with like his brothers who go and join a different uh, religious group. And, you know, they were lo probably looking for some sort of similar thing of uh, of mentors and, you know, how to grow up. And then finally, you know, into adulthood, um, you know, he ultimately has to decide what kind of adult he's going to be. And he has to, he is actually thrown into situations I have never been in in my life uh, with political upheaval and um, this sort of, um, I guess you could almost say persecution um, that he undergoes um, and definitely some trials and torments that he undergoes. Uh, unlike anything I've experienced, but, you know, I can still see myself in him and for what he hopes for, even under those circumstances as an adult, um, I could really sort of connect with and identify with as well. So, yeah, um, you know, I found the book uh, just really engaging. It was really an, an interesting look into northern this northern Nigeria, because Nigeria is... Um, part Christian and part Muslim. He is from the northern part, which is more, I guess, Muslim. Um, and how um, how he, um, through his life, how he used religion um, to, to make sort of structure meaning around his life and what happens to him, um, some of it good and some of it bad, um, and how he sort of seeks to understand the world um, using that tool of religion to try to, you know, to try to help with that uh, understanding. Uh, so, you know, I thought that was that was really interesting. The story is told in this first person, um, you know, Dantala's voice, which is so, I think that's part of what's really engaging about the book, um, is that, you know, we hear his voice uh, only. It's told, you know, so when he's a young boy, it's a very young and, and naive um, voice. And then, um it's a searching voice when he's a young man, and then by the time he's an adult, you know it's a uh, it's a powerful 
voice after all he's been through, after all he goes through. So um, I just really, I really enjoyed it. Um, I do, would, I would like to, I think, read more um, African authors. I'm going to try to to investigate, you know, new ones. If anybody has any suggestions from for writers from Africa, um, I was interested to hear the Kane Prize. I did see that the Kane Prize for African writing this year went to um, a writer who has a story featured in short story featured in a short story collection that's all about the city of Khartoum in Sudan and it's a Sudanese writer um, so that sort of sounded intriguing so I'm I might have to get that read um, at some point hopefully um, relatively soon so I think I'll stop the chat with that um, you know, I really am glad that I, I went ahead and put this work on my must-read list. It's one of those works probably that if I hadn't put on my must-read list, it would have probably kept getting shuffled aside just because I didn't know what to expect from it. So I'm really glad that I did put it on my must-read list and, and got it read. So I'll leave the chat with that. Let's talk a bit about what I am currently reading. Um, and then um, let me just pull up the cover for you if I can get to it here fairly quickly. I am reading um, Weep, Shudder, Die, A Guide to Loving Opera by Robert Levine. This has been really good. He's a very humorous, uh, entertaining writer. Um, this, uh, I'm about, I'm over a third of the way. I'm close to maybe getting close to halfway done with this. Um, it's very good, uh, very accessible. It's very general. It's for the general uh, reader who's not familiar with opera. This is, serves as an introduction to opera. Um, he talks a little bit at the very beginning about how opera evolved, very briefly in only a few paragraphs. Um, and then we're going um, region by region um, through the operas of the major opera uh, producing uh, languages like um, uh, German. Uh, Mozart gets a, a section by himself. Then we have English language, French language, and Italian language. And I don't know if we do Russian language or not. I I don't know. I, I know there's, I, right now I'm doing Mozart. I've already finished the German section. And I remember seeing that there's an English language and an Italian language section and a French language section. Not sure what else is in there. But anyway, there'll be a chat coming up about it when I'm finished. And then uh, finally for my last read of my must read list, I don't need to do a drawing uh, because I only have one more work to read on my must read list and then I will be completed with my 27 must read. This is going to be Wind 73 and Pinball. Um, it's Hear the Wind Sing and Pinball 1973, I think. Is, was the original titles. These are two novellas that have been published together under the title Wind Pinball. These were Murakami's first two debut uh, short novels. Um, Murakami was not a big fan of these, so they did not, they were not in print for a very long time, and I, I think I read that he resisted having these translated into English, but ultimately they serve as a prequel to um, A Wild Sheep Chase and Dance, 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 which I have never read either of those two. This, this is the three works that are four works, if you count these as two. Um, this rat, uh, pinball, uh, wind pinball, as well as uh, sheep, the Wild Sheep Chase and um, Dance, 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 all are called the Rat series. This is because there's a, a sort of, a, I think there's an anonymous narrator and then his ex-roommate, was called The Rat. And I don't know much about these works, um, and I, so I'll be anxious to get to uh, Win Pinball um, very soon. And that will, be, that will wrap up my 27 must-reads following that. So anyway, until next time, take care. Bye.